Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry that I'm not there with you today. My name is Caroline Lehman, and I'm working with everyone as a part of our Darwin project, looking at fire management and pasture management. And I'm going to talk specifically today about how we manage fire and can manage fire in Madagascar. All over the world, our mosaics of fire prone such as grassland versus fire sensitive, such as forest vegetation. These mosaics of vegetation have actually coexisted for many millions of years across the world. And today, all across Australia and Africa, fire is managed in a proactive way to support biodiversity, people and land and people's livelihoods. And here in this picture, you can see a picture of someone from Northern Australia lighting a planned fire that will have been produced as part of a management plan for a national park and protected area in Northern Australia. And in these areas, management plans for fire are designed and co-designed amongst community groups, amongst indigenous groups, and amongst national parks and other landholders to decide how to manage fire best for biodiversity, for livelihoods, for carbon, uh, and also for managing risk. This is a global map of fire. And in this map, we can see the fraction of the land that is burnt on average per year. Areas in dark orange and red are the areas of earth that burn most frequently, and the areas in white and dark blue are the areas that burn most infrequently. So you'll notice that Madagascar pops up in this map, but so does many other regions of the earth, such as Australia, Africa, even parts of Asia and parts of Brazil. That's because these areas of the world actually share climates that are very similar in terms of temperature, in terms of the amount of rainfall, and in terms of the seasonality of that rainfall. And all of this means that actually fire is very predictable. The amount of fire that's on Madagascar is not unusual or different. It's actually very much in line with the expectations that we have for the environment that it occupies on Earth today. It's also really good that there are similarities in fire between other parts of the world and Madagascar. And it's for this reason that on the previous slides, when I was showing you images of Australia, that we can look to these areas that work proactively with fire in Northern Australia and different parts of Africa, that all run programs of fire management for biodiversity, for conservation, and for land management, for carbon, uh, and for pasture management. And we can ask, what can we learn from these places? because actually the situation on Madagascar is not very different, despite that sometimes we think that on Madagascar there might be an extreme or unusual amount of fire. That's actually not the case. And that's really helpful for us to know when we want to go ahead in terms of planning how we might manage and use fire proactively for conservation, for biodiversity and people. Across those red areas or orange areas of the earth, what's burning is generally just dead grass. And you'd know this from your experience of fires across different parts of Madagascar. They're usually occurring in the dry season and usually the largest, hottest fires you'll find in the later parts of the dry season. And it's just dead grass that's being consumed. Here are three maps. The one on the left hand side is a set of fire regimes for Madagascar that we've calculated based on that fire data I showed you in the previous slide. So the areas in white and blue are the areas that burn the least and the areas in orange and red are the ones that burn the most. And that is that most fire in the central highlands is predictable and it's predictable because of the rainfall and the vegetation and the people. So here in the middle map uh, of vegetation, we can see the dark green of the east coast, the forests of the east, 
and we can also see that yellow area of the central highlands, which is generally of less vegetation. Then on the third map on the right, we have a map of rainfall, and that also shows the highest rainfall on the east coast and the lowest rainfall in the south. And actually, the amount of fire across Madagascar is very predictable because of these three. So if we look at this a little bit more closely, it might help us understand it. Let's look at the places where there's no fire. Here is Tana, where you guys are sitting right now. And if you look out the window, you'll only see very tiny fires if there are any fires at all. But basically, there is not much fire in places with many, many people. And that's because there's just simply too many people occupying the land for there to be extensive fire. Equally, areas in the south are too dry. If people are to light fires in these areas, they tend to be small and you actually have to work very hard for those fires to be extensive. So these areas in the south are too dry. Equally, the areas on the east coast in the forests are also too wet. If someone wants to light a fire here, they also must work very hard to do so, and they'll only be able to light a fire at a certain time of year, and it will have to be a very small fire. The only times of year at which fires would occur in these landscapes, particularly in the east, is when there is significant drought or extreme conditions that might promote fire. But then we see the central highlands. It's just right. It's not too many people, it's not too dry, and it's not too wet. It's just right for there to be extensive amounts of fire. And this is because of the seasonal rainfall and the plentiful rainfall that formulates grasslands across the central highlands, much like they occur in Africa, upland Africa. And also, it's important that there are not too many people in these landscapes, and there are currently not too many zebu because zebu are eating grasses. So if you have more zebu eating more grass, it simply means less fire. If we try and take these lessons from Africa, we can see that in African grasslands and most places, the amount of fire that is in a landscape is set by rainfall. Here are four graphs. One graph in the top left-hand corner, here is all the data. And here in B, C and D are actually four different management regimes in the same location of prescribed burning, of flexible prescribed burning, and of no prescribed burning, but where fires were only set by lightning. And what you can see is that the amount of fire from each of these regimes is largely predictable and set by the amount of rainfall that's in the landscape. The more rainfall, the more fire. So what does that mean when we want to manage fire. Here is an example of maps from a national park in Northern Australia. Now keep in mind, this national park is about 10% the size of Madagascar. It's a huge area. This place called Kakadu National Park is a place where national park managers decided to change the management of fire. They changed it from the late dry season to the early dry season. And when they did that, they largely changed the season of fire, but generally not the overall area of the fire because that was still set by climate. But it was very helpful to know that what they could influence was not necessarily how much fire there was, but when those fires occurred. And this is because it happens that when you have people in the landscape, they do affect characteristics of fire. So when you have few people in landscapes, you tend to have larger fires. And when you have more people in landscapes, you tend to have smaller fires. And you can see that here on the left hand picture here, there is no settlements in this area. And so that if you have a lighter fire here, it can easily spread over this whole region. Whereas in here, there are actually many small settlements dotted through the landscape. And there are many more tracks and roads as a consequence and so it's harder for fires to spread especially grassland fires so what can we control about fire 
while people can't actually easily control the area of burned by fire and they can't really control the frequency of fire this is really strongly linked to the amount of rainfall and the seasonality of rainfall that drives the climate of the central highlands of madagascar but people can control the time of year and also the time of day when those fires start and so people are very good at anticipating the season of fire and so often effective strategies for managing fire is to light fires strategically early in the dry season in strategic locations along rivers or at the edges away from sensitive habitats that we want to protect and by doing so people can often control the intensity of fire they can also increase control the size of those fires. And when you do that, you can create a larger patchwork and mosaic of fire that is helpful often for the management aims of the landscapes that you want to work in. Thank you.